Hi guys, welcome to Private Pilot. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a movable scrolling card. So you'll typically find this design in map apps as a way of showing you more detailed information. And other places I've seen it are in banking apps. In fact, that's going to be the example that we're going to be used to build our, our version of it in this video today. Um, but before we dive in, let's take a look at the finished prototype in action. Okay, so as you can see, when I scroll up, the card moves until it reaches a predefined position, at which point the card position freezes, but the transactions continue to scroll. As well as the card freezing when continuously scrolled, it also snaps at two fixed positions. To be fair, ProPi doesn't really make this kind of interaction that easy to build, and it seems to have stumped a few of you out there. So in this video, I'm going to show you two ways to achieve this. One very basic way, which may suit your needs, and one other way which is more complex to build, but is also more realistic. Okay, so without further ado, let's get prototyping. Okay, so here we are inside of Figma, and I've got my banking app design, which I want to prototype this card feature. So we've got the card here. So this is my transactions. So you can see it's kind of sitting halfway up the screen. And basically I want to this for be able to move up to about three quarters of the screen, fix its position, and then I want the transactions to continue to scroll. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this into Pro Protopy. First off, let's just go over to Protopy create a new PI file. So we need to make sure we've got a PI file ready to receive our export. And I'm just gonna change this to an iPhone 12 Pro because that's the, that's the size of the canvas that I've got in Figma. Okay, that's all ready to go. Let's go back to Figma. I'm gonna select my home frame, got the ProtoPi exporter here. Just gonna hit export. So I'm gonna export as one scene. That's gonna do its thing. Okay, so here we are with our design successfully imported into Protopy. Okay, and we've got our transactions container here. Okay, so I guess I'm thinking that I should probably just be able to add like a drag trigger to this card because I want people to be able to drag it up. And then the transactions need to scroll. So maybe I make the transactions into some, some kind of scroll container and then that should be able to scroll and all the drag and the scroll should kind of happen and it should all work, right? So that's kind of my, my initial thoughts of how I might approach this. So let's give that a whirl. So I'm gonna select transactions here. I'm gonna come over to the triggers panel. I'm gonna add a drag trigger. Okay, making sure that transactions is selected. Okay, um, let me just test that. So, okay, nothing happening yet because I haven't added any responses yet, okay? So when you add a trigger, you have to add responses. So I'm gonna come into my drag trigger. I'm gonna add a move response. And again, I want transactions to be selected and I want the direction just to be vertical. Obviously, this is just a vertically scrolling list. And I'm actually going to use this limit feature. So I want the card to move up, but then stop at a certain position, okay? So we're gonna use a limit feature. So I'm gonna choose from the drop down box on limit, custom limit, because I, I want a custom, a custom value range there. And I'm gonna start my, my minimum range point from 150 on the y-axis and I'm going to set my max to 405 so this is something I've just worked out in advance so that's kind of the range of which I want my car to move okay so that should basically take care of the dragging part let's just um, do a preview and that see if that's working so I'm dragging up and then even though if I try and drag beyond it it won't let me and it won't let me go below so I've got my range kind of set up here using the drag trigger. So that's looking that's looking good so far, seems to be working. So let's just close preview down, come back to our triggers. Um, so next up, I want to do the scrolling part. And to do that, I just need to restructure my layers slightly. And this is something you find with when you're working in Figma and then you'll come into ProPy. You're not really, you haven't really got your interaction design hat on when you're in Figma. You're, you're mostly kind of focused on drawing the graphics. As soon as you come in to start laying interactions, that's when you start thinking about how things should be, be structured. And what I actually want to happen here, I want all the rows and the header here. So I've got this header row to be in a container separate to the card. I've actually got this spacer container, which is a, a leftover Figma thing. It's gonna delete that. I'm gonna take the header and all the rows, shift select those. I'm gonna group those together. 
and I'm going to call this new container rows. So now we've got our transactions container and inside of that we've got a rows subgroup and we've also got the sheet which is basically the background card and the little drag handle thing. Okay, so this rows group we've just created, I'm going to turn that into a scrollable container. I'm just going to choose scroll here and by default Protopie has chosen the vertical scroll which is what we want. And I also want it to, I don't want the, the transactions to bleed outside of the card when we scroll them. So I'm just going to come down and clip the sub layers here. And as you know, with scroll containers, we have to define the scrollable area and it has to be less than the total area. Um, so we've got all these transactions here. So if I didn't change this bounding box here, nothing would scroll. But of course, we want the scrollable area to be the distance of the card once it's extended, okay? So we need to work that out. I've obviously worked that out in advance. Um, and for me, for my design, it's gonna be 582. So I'm just gonna change the height of the rows container to 582. Okay, so we can see now our container's slightly different size. The rows container here, you can see that's our scrollable area. Okay, so I think that's all we should need to do. That should work. So let's open up preview, give that a test. Okay, so I'm gonna start dragging and whoa, what's that? Something weird's happening. So it's, it's like we've got this weird parallax effect. So why is this happening? So why isn't this working the way we expected? Well, the thing about Protopy is that drag, we've added drag, that's a trigger. We've also made a container scrollable. And even though that's not, a, that's not an obvious trigger that we, we, we've added, scroll has kind of got its own trigger built, built in. So it's kind of using the same, the same what we call an event. So it's the same, tr the same two triggers. Two triggers are basically executing at the same time. So as we drag up, the card's moving up because of the drag trigger, but the scroll is also moving with the card because it's nested inside of the transactions container. But because it's a scroll container, it's also moving at the same rate. So it's moving because of the scroll and it's moving because of the drags. So that's twice the distance happening at the same time. So that's why you're getting this weird parallax effect. So this is... Um, a bit strange and not really what we want. We actually want the card to move up and when it gets to the point where it stops, then we want the scroll to take over. Okay, so we're gonna to have to think a little bit outside of the box to create this inside of Protopie. Unfortunately, Protopie doesn't really make this incredibly easy to do. Um, but we've got a few different ways of doing that and that's what we're gonna look at how we can achieve this feature in a probably the most, in a kind of basic way first in the next in the next section so see you there okay so first we're going to look at a basic way of creating the feature and this might be good enough for you and what you need to do okay so i've got my file pretty much as i'd left it okay so what i want to do i want to i just want to reorganize my my layers a little bit, restructure them a little bit, just to make my life a little bit easier. We're gonna be pumping in lots of values. Um, so if we have a, a zero point, that's gonna make it a little bit easier. So the way I'm gonna create that zero point is I'm gonna create an empty container. I'm just gonna drag that over here. And this is gonna be basically the viewable area of my extended card. So it's gonna start at the top of the tab bar and it's gonna finish somewhere just below the balance. Okay, so this, this is gonna be my, my extended card area. Okay, so I'm gonna call this container card and I'm gonna put the transactions container inside of it. Okay, so now we've got card and because transactions, when we put it inside the container, it didn't actually move its position um, from where it was. So it's now in exactly the same position, but it's inside the other container. So you can see if we, if we select transactions here, we can see it's at Y266. Okay, so we know that the top of the card is going to be zero because it's inside this, this container now. Okay. okay, so the first thing we need to do, because we've now put it in a container called card, we've changed effectively 
the move the move response we added so these values are now wrong because they were based on where it was before okay so we need to change these so we need to reset our limit so let's come back to transactions so we can see that its starting position is 266 okay and if we just drag transactions up until we can see all the transactions in fact before we do that we just need to turn off the clip sub layers on this rows and actually we do need to remove the the paging on rows as well okay so remove the paging on rows and we've unclipped the sub layer okay so let's go back to transactions and we're going to drag it all the way up till we can see the last transaction above the tab bar and we'll read the value so that's minus 185 so we're going to undo that put it back to where it was so we want to keep that value in our head so we're going to come up to here and that's going to be our minimum so minus 185 and the starting position of transactions so that's 266 that's going to be our maximum 266 okay so let's just check that out so we can see now we can see all of our transactions okay so we can see the first one all the way up to central perk okay you can see the the cards moving with it because we need to detach the card away from the transaction so we actually need to move the well what i'm calling the card which is the sheet so the background is called the sheet that's the sheet contained here so that's basically the background and the little drag handle we need to take that out of the card container completely and we're just going to put that below so we've got a card with transactions in it and we've got our sheet separate so now if we test it we'll see that it's no longer attached okay so that's looking good okay so we need some some way to connect the sheet to the transactions list as it moves and the way we're going to do that is with a trigger called chain and if you haven't used chain, used chain before it's a great trigger it basically allows you to chain or connect the property of one object to the property of another object and in this scenario we're going to take the the transactions y property and we're going to chain to that the sheet y property okay so the sheet value so that's basically going to make the two kind of be connected okay so let's just close down preview so let's come over and add a chain trigger and we're going to target the transactions container and we want the Y property because remember that's what we're dragging up here, the Y property, okay? Okay, so within the chain trigger, we wanna add a move response and we wanna move the sheet. So let's find the sheet container. And when you add a response inside chain, you get this kind of matrix of values that you need to put in. Um, can be a bit um, scary looking maybe um, and sometimes a bit confusing but we're going to walk we're going to walk through it okay so range one so that's the range of transactions that's the y position of transactions so we're basic range one's basically saying when i move from my starting position which is the top value to my ending position that range of motion is going to be a number of pixels i want to move my sheet x number of pixels okay so we, we want this to be a one-to-one -one mapping we don't want any parallaxing going on. So we just need to work out what those values are. So we know, let's start with the transaction. So we know that we've got its starting position, which is 266, okay? And in fact, that's already been added for us. And we need to know where it's gonna to move to. So basically where the top of the card is, okay? So let's take our transactions and we're just gonna move it up to where the top of the card is. So that's going to be zero. Obviously we, we helped ourselves out there. So we know it's going to move 266 pixels. Okay, so that's the range we want. So we need to move the sheet. So we need the starting position of sheet. So basically this is going to be connected to our starting position of transaction. So our, our sheet starting position is 403. So let's come over here and put in 403. 
and we need it to move 266 pixels. So we just need to get our calculator out. And we're gonna put in 403, and we're gonna minus 266. And that's gonna give us a value of 137. So that's gonna be our final position. So basically when the transactions is at position zero, we want the sheet position to be 137. Okay. Okay, so let's just preview that and see what we got. Okay, so we can see now that the two are connected together. And when we get to that, that magic position, we can see that the card stops, but the transactions is carrying on. Now we can see that we've got some bleed there. So we just need to come back to our card container. We need to turn on clip sub layers. Okay, let's try that, go back to preview. And we can see now, we've now clipped that. Okay, so you can see we've got our effect that we wanted to achieve. So the card comes up, then it stops at a certain point, but the transactions carries on and it kind of bleeds underneath. Okay, so that's the basic solution. Um, there's a few things wrong with this. This, is my, this might do okay for you if you just need it basically, but a couple of things that make it a bit unrealistic. Um, number one, the, and it depends on, I guess, on what mobile platform you're prototyping for, but I'm prototyping for iOS here. So when we interact with scroll views in iOS, we get when we get to the end of that view, we get this kind of bounce action. It's called over scroll. And Protopy already has over scroll built into when you, when you turn a container into a scroll container. But because we're not using a scroll container anymore, we don't get that for free. Um, so that's one of the things missing and maybe a limit, limitation, a slight limit, a slight interaction limitation that we don't get that over scroll. It just kind of has that hard stop, as you can see here. So that's the first thing. Um, the other thing is that, and this is more an aesthetic that I actually want there to be some snap points with this card container, okay? So I want to basically have it snap to its minimized position, which is its starting position, as you can see on screen here. And I wanna be able to just drag it a little way and I want it to snap all the way up to this kind of like fully expanded position. And this is something um, some banking apps do, which I think is quite nice. So I wanna add that capability as well. Okay, so this both those things are gonna add more realism to our feature. Um, it's gonna mean we're gonna have to re-engineer the whole thing in a slightly different way, but that's what we're gonna be doing in the next section. So see you there.